Imagine a world with no sideboards. A world with no side boom? No! <laughs> no, Excelsior, you. Uh, oh, you just, just roll the intro. Hatchlings, we are here today to talk about some new developments in the world of Magic and Magic Arena specifically. I'm going to be talking to you about an article that's basically just called The And in Magic the Gathering. It's uh, It's got a number of different points and it's the and of MTG Arena is the technical name for it there, sorry. There's a number of different things in this article that I had wanted to discuss, but for this particular video, what we're going to be talking about is the portion of it called Best of Three, but Sideboard Free. All right, we're going to be talking about how Arena is going to be diverging from physical magic. Now, we expected things of this nature, but now we have more concrete information about it. So I'm going to go ahead and read through just this portion of the article for you, and I'm going to stop to discuss any parts of it that I want to discuss, and at the end, I'll wrap it all up here. So, best of three, but sideboard free. For almost all of Magic's history, best of three play with sideboarding has been the go-to solution for competitive play and it survived the test of time due to its strategic depth and competitive balance. With the upcoming Mythic Invitational, we're working on an alternative format that has multiple games per round, but doesn't include sideboarding. As with any other time we've bucked tradition, we're heading down this path for what we believe are compelling reasons. We don't want competitive matches to be decided in a single game, but we also believe that having multiple matches with a variety of decks will provide an exciting new play experience. We know that this new format will increase the overall possibility space to be solved, the overall possible, what the? Increase the overall possibility space to be solved with each set. Oh, that's a clunky sentence. I've read this before even in that. Oh, I don't like that. It will allow those watching to directly integrate what they've seen at the highest level of play into how they play MTG Arena. It also removes a huge barrier to entry from competitive play. And on MTG Arena, we want as many people participating in the process and engaged in the event as we can muster. So when I talked before about how MTG Arena is dumbing down magic, we are seeing this. This is kind of couched language to say the same. They're trying to make it simpler for people. You don't have to be as smart. You don't have to spend as much time to get into the game. And I'm actually okay with that. That's not a huge issue in this regard. So, sideboarding solves many problems, but it does so with the addition of a process that's challenging to understand and master. In case anybody who's watching this doesn't play Magic that much or has only played Arena and isn't really familiar with what a sideboard is, is you have your normal 60 card deck and you have a 15 card sideboard. Now in the first game of your two of three match against your opponent, you play your original deck, and during the second and third game of your match, you are allowed to change cards out of your deck for cards in your sideboard on a one-to-one -one basis. So at the end of all the changes you make, you still have a deck of 60 cards, or however many it was you started with, and a 15 card sideboard. So you can only take them in and out one for one. So basically it lets you choose 15 other cards. Let's say your deck is weak against particular strategies. Oh, my deck is really weak against burn decks. Well, this allows you to go ahead and put cards in your sideboard that will give you an advantage against burn decks. So in the first game of your match, you would be at a disadvantage, but on games two and three, you would have more of an advantage because you were able to slot these cards in that help you against burn decks while taking out cards that weren't helping you against burn decks. That's really a simple way of putting the sideboard. So the idea of the sideboard adding complexity is how do you build the sideboard? What do you put in? How, how deep is your understanding of your deck versus the meta? You have to know what your deck's weak against and you also need to know what you're going to be facing off against to craft a useful sideboard. So those are kind of the problems you'd run into with sideboard building. Now, the goal of MTG Arena bringing and to the table, experimenting in this space lets us do so in a way that we believe will add breadth to magic competitive play. We didn't start with the goal of creating this new format we're calling Arena Standard for competitive play in Magic Arena, but the closed and open betas have led us to where we're at today. From the start, we wanted to have MTG Arena be a place for fast, fun magic 
and creating a client that can support that, we found that the vast majority of our players end up playing primarily best of one games. This is very true for me. In all honesty, I do not enjoy playing best of three, especially if you're stuck against a slow opponent. I don't know about you guys, but I end up raging out when I'm sitting there waiting for my opponent to play. It's like, come on, come on. You don't give people the same sort of uh, patience that you would in real life when you're sitting there in front of your computer going, can you just play, especially at the beginning of the game when it takes them forever to just pick a land. How hard is it to choose what your first land is, you fool? That's how I end up. So best of one is how I play. And honestly, it harkens back to the beginning of Magic, long before there were even formats. There was no sideboards. There was no standard or anything like that before standard came along called type one and type two, all that jazz before any of that. We all just played best of one games. That's it. You would play in an event and it would be like double elimination where if you lost two games, you were out. But you only played each person once, so best of one. Now, honestly, that doesn't reward skill as much because there is more luck involved when you're playing just best of one games, right? Because you don't have a two or three match to see like, hey, who's better at this? Who can get the like the advantage knowing what the other guy's playing? So there is, there's two sides to that coin. But the best of one games definitely appeal to me, and I can see how they would appeal to the majority of players, truthfully. I've even seen tweets about this from players saying, you know what, I used to really like two out of three matches, but I find myself with the arena trending towards best of one, and I definitely fall into that category. There are many reasons people gravitate towards best of one, but in the end, it all comes down to the length of a match, indeed. All other aspects being equal, it's much easier to commit to a match that's going to average out to roughly six minutes of playtime than it is to sign up for a match that's going to be closer to three times that amount. On the far end, over 99% of best of one matches are completed in under 18 minutes. In best of three matches, that isn't true until just under an hour. So there's a significant time difference, in all honesty, and I've played in both style formats, so I agree with this. This is in no way, this in no way means we want to abandon best of three play on Magic Arena, but it has us looking for ways we can tailor competitive play to better match how most people play MTG Arena. As with so many parts of MTG Arena development, this is an ongoing process, and we will continue to evolve how it's working with our partners within Wizards and with our players. An important ingredient to having our esports leagues and events be compelling for the rest of the Magic Arena playing audience is to have it mirror as closely as possible the experience they have themselves when they play the game. So what they're saying here is, we want MTG Arena to be an esport that people watch. As a result, we want it to basically be like when they sit down to play. So since the majority of people play best of one style matches, we're looking for what people will emulate in that regard. And there's another dimension to it as well, which he brings up here, where it says sideboarding does not do that, but switching decks entirely does. I know that I'll swap to a new deck frequently on the constructed ladder, especially if I start losing. And who hasn't done that? Who hasn't been playing with a deck? Like, I'll be playing with my big green tower deck, and after a number of losses, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm switching it up. I'm going to pull out my red burn deck or something else, right? So that is very common. I've done it a lot. I imagine most people do. We certainly appreciate no one wants a round of a premier event to be just a single game, and swapping decks will allow for a diverse, interesting experience, and we aren't even mandating the decks actually be different. So if you break the format, we will let you play your deck all event long. Will the no sideboarding metagame be different from the traditional one we're used to? We certainly hope so. If it's not clear by now what they're talking about, basically what's gonna happen is when you come to an event, instead of bringing one deck and a 15 card sideboard, you're going to bring two decks. Now these two decks can be exact copies of each other, or it could be like, for example, me, my green deck and my red deck. And when you play your first game, you use one deck. When you play your second game, you use your second deck. Now you can choose which one you're gonna use. So the, when I go up against player A, I could be like, I'm gonna start with my green deck. When I go up against player B, I can start with my red deck. And then you alternate decks, and for the third match, you actually use the either or, you get to choose. So if you end up in the third game, you get to choose which of those decks you want to use. It actually kind of feels like they're playing a little bit off of Keyforge here. I don't know, it feels like maybe a little bit of Keyforge influence, because Keyforge does have this multi-deck kind of format, but that could just be um, like seeing a pattern when it isn't there, seeing a kind of a connection when it actually isn't there. But it definitely is possible. As I said before, MTG Arena is meant to be an additional way to play, and Magic is at its best when each experience is different in its own way with new puzzles to solve. 
I look forward to all the additional content that cracking the no sideboard metagame will add to the already robust traditional metagame content out there. I've already seen some cool lists pop up already, and we're just getting started. Our desires for different decks and metagames has led the TCG Design Studio to start exploring how to support all forms of play with the cards we put into our set. We think that more cards like Knight of Autumn, Ravager Worm, and Be Devil should help lower the number of unwinnable matchups in Arena Standard. And Arena Standard is the new name for this two deck format. And the reason that they feel like these particular cards will help lower the number of unwinnable matchups is basically it's a bunch of answers packed into one card. Knight of Autumn and Ravager Worm and Bedevil all give you multiple options to handle different scenarios. So basically, they're trying to create more toolbox cards that count as multiple options so that if you're only going to play one game, you're not kind of stuck in the same um, in the same situation. Now, meanwhile, they will continue to make traditional sideboard cards like Cinder Vines, Unmoored Ego, and Citywide Bust that can find homes and tabletop sideboards. So they're not intending to sacrifice design in terms of we're not going to make cards that are sideboard tools. They're just going to make cards that are sideboard tools and answers. Toolbox, this card can handle a whole bunch of different things. Design doesn't have the decades of iteration with Arena Standard as it does with tabletop sideboarding version, so there will be some learning as we go. Just in case something goes haywire, I'll mention here that we can maintain separate band lists for the two versions of Standard, and MTG Arena will be able to enforce the proper list based on which mode you are enjoying. Now this I have a little bit of a problem with. I personally really like the idea of a banned list being across the board. If you're playing, if you're playing Magic, when it comes to Standard, you have the exact same banned list. Man, my nose is so itchy, I'm sure you've noticed, but if you haven't now, pointing it out, really professional. Oh, 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 when you got a big nose, you get big itches, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so, I don't really, I don't really enjoy this concept of having multiple band lists and needing to keep on top of what's banned in standard and what's banned in arena standard. But at the same time, I do like the idea of this format. I do like the variety. And I started before sideboards were a thing. And I genuinely don't play formats with sideboards very often. So I'm perfectly fine having a sideboard list environment. Now, They'll be carefully monitoring the metagame data to ensure the experience they're hoping for is actually the one you get. So overall, this is gonna be a brand new style situation. It's, it's something that's easier to implement in Arena, obviously, because if you wanna play two copies of the same deck, you don't have to go out and get eight copies of each card. It would be a lot trickier to play this in a physical format. I guess not, that's not, that's not true, what am I talking about? You could just go, I'm not using two decks, I'm just using two copies of this one deck. What, what am I even thinking? I'm still a little sick, so my brain's not firing at 100%, but I'm getting better. So overall, you know what? I find the fact that they're going to tinker around with MTG Arena in this way to be interesting. As long as design doesn't move entirely towards MTG Arena, I'm okay with that. I'm a huge fan of variety. And this format seems like you're going to get a lot more variety in your games, and it'll be more difficult to solve the meta as well, right? Because people can be coming with two different decks. So the whole paper, rock, scissors scenario, if there's three main decks in standard, well, what's your opponent packing? It's no longer do they have paper, rock, or scissors. It's do they have paper and scissors? Do they have paper and rock? All things like that. So it adds, it adds more depth, in my opinion, to what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and give that the thumbs up, and now I'm gonna go